Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and I've been a SharePoint solution architect for the past 15 years. In fact, I've been awarded the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award from Microsoft. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest feature inside of SharePoint, which is going to totally transform the way that your workflows are operating in SharePoint, and it's using approval buttons. I'm going to show you how to deploy this. Let's take a look. Okay, so the example that I'm going to be walking you through today is based on a human resources SharePoint site. Now, typically SharePoint sites, which are for human resources or kind of people departments, typically focus on having areas for things about who we are, so leadership information, a bit about the different teams and departments, how we work, vision, priorities, culture, things like that, values, uh, general resources, documents, pages, uh, things like that. But what we're going to be focusing on is actually a policies area. Now, it's quite common that a human resources uh, SharePoint site would have a policies area, which is quite often a document library. Now, this is literally just a basic out-of-the-box document library. There's nothing else that's been added to this in terms of any additional columns or any additional settings that's been enabled just yet. As you can see, I've got some sample documents in here, things like bring your own device, data security, working from home, typical things you might find in an employee kind of area of policies. So people can go there and find relevant policies that they need to. It's actually becoming more and more important uh, in this modern age to actually have an area, a sort of single source of truth, if you will, a knowledge base of information. Because as we're starting to use things like Copilot, we are needing to have an area of information that Copilot can pull its information from. Now, to enable the approval process is quite simple. You'll see across the top bar up here, we've got a couple of different actions. And underneath the automate action, you'll see that we've got this configure approvals button. Now, I believe in time that potentially the, these kind of automated and integration options are going to get a little bit more simplified because there's quite a lot of different options in here at the moment. You could go into, say, for example, the flows tab and you could go and trigger a approval workflow if you wanted to. Say, for example, if you want to integrate Power Automate, we could create an approval workflow. But actually, it's been simplified um, already that we have this configure approvals button already for us. I've not had to add this button. Microsoft have just added this to this drop down for me. So I click on this and you can then see we've got this pop-up message that appears. It says configure approvals, enable approvals. Turning on approvals will add the approval status column to the current view. So we're going to get a column which is going to say um, approval. Uh, users will be able to select an item and enter approval details and submit a request. So the important thing here is this is a very simplistic option. As I say, if you want to build a more advanced approval process, you're going to need to use Power Automate and use one of the integration options and build it out manually yourself. This is quite a simplistic option. And what goes along with that is the fact that the user will have to manually enter every time they submit their approval who they want the approval to go through. But if this is just for a very simple kind of process where we've got policies, where we're just wanting maybe our line manager, for example, to approve them, or any other kind of content, which is just you want a quick approval that's sort of digitally... Uh, documented that it's been approved somewhere. This is a perfect use case for it. Um, and generate a Teams notification to the desired approver. So it's worth noting as well that the approvals uses the approvals feature of Microsoft Teams. So if you're not using Microsoft Teams and only SharePoint, then this probably isn't the best option for you. Again, you'd probably want to go down the route of using a Power Automate workflow, and maybe you're getting your approvals sent via email instead. You can disable approvals at any time and hide the column. However, in-progress approvals will still be available inside of Teams. So what they're saying here is, yes, you can turn this off at any time, but if you've already submitted documents through approval, um, just turning it off inside of SharePoint won't disable or stop those items that have already gone through to the approval steps inside of Teams. They'll either need to be cancelled or ignored or approved um, before they're, they're, they're kind of finished. So... What we then need to do, select the approvals tab here and then click on apply. Now, this might just take a couple of seconds, um, but you should then see a, a additional column that appears here called approval status. Now, I'm just going to move this out a little bit just so we can actually see this a little bit better. Now, we've then got this column here. As you can see, um, the, these documents, they're all set to not submitted. So by default, obviously, none of these have gone through an approval yet. So they're all going to be set to the status of non not submitted. 
Then all I need to do is click on the not submitted button. And you can see here, this will bring up a request approval form. By default, the name field will contain the name of the document. So if this was, I mean, this is fairly clean kind of name for a document, but I've seen some policy documents in the past before where they've got kind of like silly things at the end, like um, latest version or new, new or final version or whatever it is. So just make sure it's cleaned up nicely. Uh, potentially, you could even remove, if you wanted to, the, the dot .docx or whatever, the if it's dot .pdf or whatever it is, you could remove that and maybe just put in here to make it clear. It's a bring-your-own-device policy. Then under approvers, we've got this little toggle here, which requires a response uh, in the assigned order. So if you were to enable that, you can actually have, if you wanted to, let's say, for example, we'll put in a couple of different people into here. Of different people we could say require the response in the assigned order or we can just and un remove that and as long as we've got the responses we're fine we can also say require response from all approvers now if we untick this it's basically just who's the first person to respond to it to approve or if i enable it it means that everybody um that is in that list of approvers has to approve it before the document can be marked as approved now i would say for this type of thing probably most likely if we just added a couple of people in here we we will just allow it to whoever's the first person to approve it. Now, there is this kind of catch-22, this kind of like phenomena that quite often if you, say for example, if you were to send an email to three people and you address them all and say, hey, Dougie, Joe, and Bob or whatever, can you approve this document for me? Uh, you might find that no one does it because everyone, I'm thinking Joe Bloggs is going to do it. Joe Bloggs is thinking Bob's going to do it. Um, Bob's thinking I'm going to do it. So you can get this phenomenon sometimes where you get stuck if you have too many people. So having the least amount of people is often works the best. Um, and then a bit of detail. So if there's any kind of notes in here. So typically, say for example, I'm looking for approval on this bring your own device policy. I might put in here to say, I have updated section three to include whatever, blah, blah, blah. So this is why I'm putting it through the approval process, because it might already have been approved, for example. Um, so this is why I'm putting it through again, so it's giving me notes. So then I'm going to click on the Submit option, and this is now going to be creating the approval request. It's working in the background. As I say, it's then going to send a Teams notification um, to the relevant person, um, and it's also going to be updating the approval status so I can see that it's actually working. Now, again, this might just take 60 seconds to go through. It's now gone through. We can see the approval request has been created, got a little tick here, and you can also see the approval status has now changed to requested. So if I was to click on that, you can then see a little timeline of exactly um, what's going on. Now, because I'm also the approver, I can approve it inside of SharePoint if I wanted to. I could reject it or I could cancel the request because I'm the person who sent it and approved it. I know this is a terrible example because you should never really be approving your own work, but it's just showing you what it would look like inside of SharePoint. I will also get a notification inside of Teams, inside of the approvals feature. And this is what it looks like inside of Microsoft Teams. You can see I've got a push notification that's come through into my activity center of Teams. I can then see the exactly the same uh, in here where I've got a link to the document. I can see who sent it, uh, as it, who it's requested by, who it's pending a response, which is me. I mean, let's just pretend Joe Bloggs sent this. So it would say requested by Joe Bloggs, pending a response from Dougie Wood. And then I can put in here and say, uh, yes, looked at this, looks great. Thank you. And then I can either choose to, obviously, I'm not going to reject, but I can click on approve, which then approves that response and will update in SharePoint. Now, if you're testing this yourself, just to let you know, it can take up to five minutes for the approval status to change. Um, but here we go. We're back in SharePoint now, and we can see that this approval status has now changed to be marked as approved. And again, if I was to click on it, I can then see the the kind of the approved, who approved it, the date and time that they approved it. Uh, and I can see that as a nice audited history of exactly what took place on this approval process. If you like this video, please do uh, subscribe to my channel for more content. And if you need any professional assistance in setting up SharePoint, there's a link in the description below to contact me.